So today, or this week, what, go, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to interface a custom uh, core to NIOS subsystem. And there are basically like two ways to do this, right? So one is, so two ways. So one way is to use the PIO. The second way is to create an Avalon interconnect wrapper, okay? And if you look at choose book, is so let me see let me get back to the mouse here All right so getting back to choose book basically redesigned uh, interrupt and ISR. So I'm going to be covering chapter 13, okay, using PIO. So if you want, you can look at uh, chapter 14, but I really don't have time to cover this, all right, number one. Number two, it involves like mastery of 2902 and 2900 stuff, and it's for the projects in this course, this is not really required. You're welcome to do it. Like if you want to use the Avalon Interconnect and create, well, it's not SOP, well, yeah, it is an SOPC component, but we use QSIS. Welcome to do it, but I'm not gonna cover it, right? So, let's see. So basically, this is chapter 13, and this is what we're gonna do, okay? This is chapter 14, uh, so you could use this in your project, you want right so going back I think in the reading I also say uh, chapter 17 so here is an example so we really won't use the VGA controller actually maybe we will we'll see how much time we have this week but basically what we're going to do is uh, the goal this week is to implement this system so what I'm going to do is today I'm not going to do anything on the DE1 right before you start, not only this project, any project, you have to understand the problem. That is, you have to think about what you want to do. So let's let's try to create this system. Right? So here is your, I'm going to draw a block diagram view of this. Here is your NIOS2 subsystem in your, so this is going to be our top level. But basically, what we're going to do is we're simply going to, so here is our uh, top level on FPGA, but what we're going to do is we're going to interface, uh, so obviously this has like clock and reset, which I'm not going to draw, right, uh, for clarity purposes. So we're going to interface a key to our NIOS subsystem, okay? So every time we press key, we're going to increment an internal counter and display it on the hex displays. Okay, so here are the hex displays. Okay, so this is whatever, like let's say you have four X displays, and we said eight bits, so it's 32 bits. This is one bit, so there's going to be an um, internal. So this internal count, which is going to be incremented and displayed on the hex display. So this is the system we're going to design. Okay. So we are still, again, like I said, we have to. Step one is we have to understand the problem, all right, for any problem solving. So, so we can ask ourselves questions, right? So let me ask you, uh, why not use switches? Why do we or why are we going to use keys? A couple of reasons, but uh, huh? Yeah, uh, switches are not debounced, all right? Are not debounced. Plus, uh, it really doesn't. Uh, makes sense to like think of when you think about incrementing, right? You push the key down, you increment it, or right? it's active low. 
So, and then you release it, you don't increment it. So you push it again, you increment it. That's, so that makes more natural sense. You could use the switches uh, to count either up or down. Again, you could do all this. You can ask, hey, what, what do we need an IOS 2 subsystem? Well, you don't, all right? You can, from 2.0.2, you can build a simple counter. That's exactly what it is uh, in VHDL itself to do this. But the whole point of doing this is to show you uh, or to give you practice on not only custom core to NIOS integration, but also how to write software, embedded software, okay? Because what you have to think about is how can I write this efficiently, this C code in here, okay? And we're also going to use, um, uh, so here, we're also going to use chapter 12, which I believe is interrupts. Let me see. down it's active um, direction let's see yeah chapter 12 right so interrupts and ISR and by the way for your lab so your next lab starts this week again you have two weeks to do it I hope you have started writing your project proposal right but anyway for next lab which is you have to display the number of seconds the program has been running you have how hardware abstraction layer functions to do this, right? There's actually functions to get you uh, the time of day, etc. Right? So look at it, all right? It's uh, basically lab three is if you can understand how to read and search for, um, search through NAS documentation. But anyway, chapter 12 is interrupts, okay? So yeah, so let's see if I can Go to this chapter, 277, 53, 24 pages. Okay, so if we look at this chapter, right? So it talks about how to process interrupts, okay? And there are examples in here. So start going through this and it'll be useful also for your project. Okay, we'll do this for uh, this week but all the information you need is in here, in your book, right? So anyway, so we're gonna use interrupts. So the next natural question is, why interrupts? In other words, what is like, for example, the, met the other approach besides interrupts? Huh? No, in so an interrupt is a function. Right, it's an interrupt service routine, it's a handler. Polling. The other approach is polling, right? Is not recommended because why? So going back, why is polling not recommended? You have to wait. So because uh, external input is, it's not only asynchronous, okay? You don't know when the user is going to push the switch. But if you think about it, right, your program can be doing something else. And that's the whole point of an interrupt mechanism, right? The key is pressed. Uh, your sequence, your program sequence gets interrupted. You service the ISR and then you come back, right? So that's what we're going to do. So there are, there are probably other steps in understanding the problem, right? But I'm just highlighting the, some important steps. Step two is, so you devise a plan. And in this case, if you think about it, right, uh, we must understand how to write good. So what is good depends on, well, size, speed, okay? But definitely efficient embedded code. Right, embedded C code. Now, if you think about it, you really don't want to use Eclipse to write some of the non-hardware portions of this code, okay? Because it takes time, like with Eclipse and like going to the NIOS. So instead, what I do is I basically use a local C compiler, like so not, not, I didn't mean local, but I meant a non-cross-compiled version, right? So basically, your NIOS2 C compiler is a cross compiler. That is, you're compiling code to be executed on the NIOS2 on your Intel 8086 processor. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a native C compiler. So it's not um, whatever the other word, words are used. So I'm going to use GCC to just start writing code. All right. So understand uh, so how to, I guess, um, design my program. OK? So for this, I, on my OS X, I use GCC is available for OS X. There is something um, called Mac ports, which I installed, and it works very well. Now for Windows, I recommend you learn how to use MinGW, right? So MinGW uh, basically gives you the GNU compiler collection, GCC, okay? One of which is a C compiler. So once you install uh, MinGW, so basically on your C drive, it'll create this hierarchy, all right? So you can go into the MSYS 1.0 home and your username folder, and here it is, okay? You can even install this on the D drive, whatever you want, right? Just make sure your folder names don't have any spaces. And then under all programs, what you'll have is where's MinGW? You will have a command shell, right? Where you can execute and test C code, right? So if you can't see this, I recommend you turn off the lights. So there I am, home with the Swami. And if this is all Unix based, right? If you don't know how to use Unix, learn. Because if you can't use, if you don't know how to use Unix, you won't survive an industry. So anyway, so here is, so what I'm going to do is I want to think about how to, I was recording this today. So let's think, where is my notepad? So I'm not going to really switch to writing, right? Because I just don't want to switch back to my pen. So how do you, so what are the different aspects of this program? Like we're thinking of the software level, not hardware level. Like what do I got to do? How do I, so I have to display my internal count, yes. So what are some software aspects of this? Again, we can start with the hardware. I'm just not starting with the hardware, I'm starting with software. So what can we do? So let's say you start writing a C program, okay, to describe this. Ideally, you should do this on paper, but I just don't have time. So I'm going to use Notepad++. And here is our C code. From last time, and I think my thing just crashed for some insane reason. So um, uh, what what do we do? So let's start with writing C. All of you have done C programming, yes? Okay. So start, what do we do? So we have an internal count and we want to display it. So give me some ideas. So you need a 32-bit value for the count, why 32 bits? Okay, so good point. So basically, I'm going to use some um, 32 bits here, right? Yeah. Yeah, we don't have a decimal point, but uh, the reason why we make it 32 bit is to make it a power of two. Now align with, um, it's a byte alignment, right? That's why. So yes, you can make it 28-bit, but we'll make it 32 bits. That is 8 bits for each 7-segment display. We just won't use the most significant bit. Okay. So you can write that down. So this program, uh, this program uh, will test. Let me just save this over my old test count. Let's see. Du -du 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 -du. Where is MinGW? There it is. MSYS 1.0. You don't have to use MinGW. I just find this easy to use. That's why I'm using it. You can install Sigwin from scratch if you haven't already done so. Right? Sigwin is basically the, it's a wrapper for running uh, GNU tools on, in Windows. Right? This program will test. You don't want to use Visual C++ for this. Right? It's not worth it. This program will test, uh, will help us understand 
how to write the software component for incrementing and incrementing an internal count value note that we use 32 bits and oh yeah by the way your data types like there is uh, like for example here alt underscore u32 right so when you're writing programs to run on the NIOS this is the data type you have to use I'm not going to do that because this is um, C code that is natively compiled so I'm just going to use unsigned int etc right but now you see why we are doing this okay it's to understand how to uh, the understand the software abstraction right there is software there is hardware it's called a hardware software code design right? or software hardware code design however you want to call it now that we'll use 32 bits to represent our count variable since uh, the hex display interface uh, at the hardware level so this comes from the hardware engineer uses 32 bits once we migrate this code to cross compile we obviously obviously have to use appropriate data types example alt underscore u32 references choose book the book for this class all right or if you want you can chuk, 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 chuk. you can look at the software I forgot what it's called right four and five NIOS two tutorials software developer handbook there you go you can look at that it's it has the same information as choose but the software developer handbook probably has like no it definitely has like updated information so two just has the concepts which is what a book is supposed to have right okay uh, so that's that all right so now uh, so let's continue to think like how do I so going back to this picture so here are 32 bits coming out so this is going to be a 32 bit output port yes but what do I have to do like can I just write these 32 bits into the 7 segment decoder no what do I, I mean so the 7 segment display what do I have to do Okay, so I have to know which bit corresponds to what part of the certain segment display, and let's just assume that that's easy to do, uh, resolve. It has to be resolved, but it's an easy thing to resolve. So let's assume the least significant bit is, uh, so this seven segment display, okay, so let's write this down as well. Here is the um, seven segment display bit encoding. So if you, let's see. So refer to let's do this, D1 user's manual. Uh, so if you go back, where is our D1? Oh my god, what's wrong with this thing? So let me close that. Why the heck? Oh man. I don't know why it's so slow. Okay, let's try this again. There. There is our seven segment display. Oh, it's not clickable. Ah, here it is. So bit six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, go like this. So we'll use the same encoding, right? That is the in a byte. The most significant bit, the seventh bit, we are really not going to use. We'll set it as zero, okay? And then bit six corresponds to this, five to this, four to this, three to this, two to this, one to this, zero to this, okay? So that's what this means, right? Uh, refer to D1 user's manual. We will use the same encoding, except seventh bit is, I mean, except the eighth bit, uh, seven down to zero, 
is not used okay and we will we will assume eighth bit is always zero okay you keep it as one I'm just assuming it's always zero it's actually you don't care okay so that's fine so the encoding is solved going back to this picture what else you need so let's say your account just think right just put some numbers in there say you want to display like I don't know 23 Basically, go back to your 2900. Like, what, there's something missing here. Decoder. There's no decoder here. Yes? So we have to write a software decoder. Make sense? You can ask, hey, Bart, why don't we use the hardware decoder? You can. This is just, again, this is just an example for you to help you understand the concepts of how to integrate a custom code to the NIOS, right? Again, you wouldn't, uh, like, you would just, this is something for which you would not use C programming, right? You would just put this in hardware, just put a VHDL counter plus a decoder. Make sense? Sorry. So how would you write a decoder in software? So what do you got to do? So in other words, how did you, we, uh, we also need a software decoder, and that's the crux of this program, right? The core. So we need a software decoder. So do you remember, suppose, for example, we want to display 23, okay? How would you do it? You remember? Yeah, so you need to extract the, uh, we want to display 23. We need to extract the units digit, which is how. How do I extract the units digit? and tens digit okay in this case the hundreds and thousands digits are what zero okay how do i extract the units digit wait, wait what, what do you mean by module more specific please so what's the units digit of 23 three how do i extract three what mathematical operation do i do the remainder okay Yes, so it's the remainder because the base is 10. What is the C operator for finding remainder? Do you know? It's the percent, right? Huh? It's called the modulus, right? Because that's the math operation. But you can't write modulus, right? There's no modulus, it's percent. Now, how do I extract the tensity? So in other words, it's the quotient when this number is divided by 10, right? And remember, in C, integer division truncates, okay? Integer division truncates in ANSI C, right? So this will help us. So if I divide 23 by t 10 and I set it to an integer, I'm going to get 2. Okay? If I set it to a float, I'm going to get 2.3, right? But remember, you just can't use floating point on, on the NIOS unless you enable software emulation, which you really don't want to do. Right? It's really slow. All right, so let's start writing this code out now. I'm going to include my standard. Let me just make sure this thing works, right? This sounds, let me always do a hello world. And hopefully this, make sure that my, where do I have two of these things open? Where am I? All right, in the right place. Uh, so GCC, this is the syntax, output test count, right, test count dot C, and if there are no errors, it won't say anything, right? So if you do test count, hello world, right? So looks like all your uh, stuff is all set up, and it's nice, all right. So this concept you probably haven't heard of, right? I'm going to use something called uh, use, well, this is C++ comment, use concept of data directed programming to write code right so basically what i can do is so i have to if the let's say the unit digit is three i have to send a specific pattern to the seven segment display yes i can use an if then else to do that it's not very efficient okay because that if then else if you think about assembly language which you all have done assembly language programming right 
No. All right. So a little bit. Fine. If you look at, if you think about the SM language, okay. If you just visualize the if-then-else, when you convert it to whatever binary or assembly code, it's a lot of constructs, right? Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use an array. What did I write? Car. I have no idea. It's unsigned int. Uh, seven segment. Let me call this display. It's technically the decoder, right? Equals. And there's going to be an array of 15 elements, okay? I always get this wrong. 15 elements. There you go. <laughs> 0 through 14, okay? No, wait. It's hexadecimal, right? So I need... So I'm going to use uh, hex format for my output. I need 0 through F, okay? 0 through 15 for a total of 16 elements. And basically what I'm going to do is here is the... Uh, central concept of data-directed programming. My data is going to, well, direct my what I do. So my code, okay? That is, my digit is going to appropriately index into my data structure. In this case, it's an array, right? For, a free, for speed, okay? What is the access time? Do you have you done big O notation? So okay, forget big O notation. When you have an array in memory, okay, how long? Like if to access the thousandth element as opposed to the fifth element, does it take a different amount of time? No. It's big O of one, right? It's constant time. Because you already predefined the array in memory, right? You're going to be like, hey, why don't I just use arrays all the time? Well, you're going to run out of space, right? That's why uh, dynamic allocation of memory, like linked lists and all came in. But we're not going to use linked lists and all that. Pretty goody stuff. Right? It's not necessary. Right? Okay. So I'm, that is my digit is going to appropriately index into my data structure. So let's say I want to display digit zero, okay? What should... Uh, so let me comment this as well. So to display zero... What should be my 8-bit code? Remember, my 7th bit, or sorry, the 8th bit is always 0, okay? So 0 is going to be what? Just tell me in binary. 0 followed by, if I want to display 0, remember, the 7th segment displays are active low. It's going to be 1 and then all zeros, okay? So this is what it's going to be. Right? So it's going to be 1, let's see, 7, seven 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one zero binary, okay. Seven sig displays on D one are active low. So what the heck is this? So let's say you use hex to encode this. What is this in hex? Is this eight zero? It's four zero. Okay. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my units digit and then index into the array, right? That's what data director programming is. Makes sense? It's a trick, right? If you have ever looked at the Unix code or even Linux code, it's all over the place. So you index into the array depending on your uh, what digit you get. So let's just do a couple of these. So let's see. So what is it going to be for one? So one, it's going to be off, right? Well, no, sorry, that doesn't matter. Six is off, five is off, four is off, three is off, two, one are on, zero is off, yes? So let's do, so what is this in X? What's that in X? Seven, what? Seven, nine, yes? You, you have done, you know this is hex and C, right? If you don't review your C program. All right, so let's see. What's two? Zero. So let's see. On six is seven is off. Bit, ah, seven on, off, on, on. Make sure I don't screw this up. We can't test it yet. I think that's what it is, right? So that. And what is this? Uh, two, 
to four. Thank you. Uh, let's go to three. All right. And then that's it. We'll stop. So three uh, is going to be actually because I need to declare all elements. I'll just make all of the others FF, so it'll just turn off the hex display. Okay. Actually, not FF. Sorry, seven uh, F because we assume that the most significant bit is zero. Yeah, what's three? So this is zero. Okay. On, off, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yes. What is this? So this should be three zero. Yes. And then the rest are off. For now. Okay. Zero X F F. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? Fair enough? All right, let's just compile this again, make sure we don't have any syntax errors. Okay, it's all happy, all right? So hex code for zero okay. Uh, okay. code for displaying zero is percent u okay which is unsigned int seven segment decoder of zero. Yes. So what's gonna come out is the integer equivalent of this all right so let's just check um, I, I use calculator give me use online tools all right so programmer uh, let's see uh, double word 32 bits yes so let's see hex four zero in decimal should be 64 makes sense okay let's see what we get oh crap all right something's wrong Error, uh, seven segment decoder undeclared. Oh, I call it seven segment display decoder. All right. So it's seven segment display decoder. Sixty-four. Okay. So again, you got to make sure that you understand everything about your program. There should be no part of your program you don't understand because, well, you, know, you should do that for any program, but especially for this program because it's embedded code. Okay, so now let's say I want to display 23. Okay, so let's just int number unsigned int number to be. Actually, I'm curious. Um, size in of unsigned int. You know how to compute the sizes of data types in C, there's an operator, a C operator, you know what it's called? Huh? What? I want to figure out how much space, how many bytes my unsigned int takes. Yeah, it's size of. It's a C operator. Just like a plus. It's So it's not really a function. right? That's how ANSI-C declares it. Let's try this. I'm curious. I haven't done this in a long time. Four bytes. Okay, that's what it is. So let's look at. Let's just make sure. All right. Uh, size. Mm. I don't know what it returns. Size in bytes. Okay. And you want to double check it with some other website, but that website looks reliable. And so I didn't. Three bits. Okay. So that's enough for us. So guess what? Let's say we're doing 64 bits. We're screwed. All right. We can't use unsigned int. Well, we have to use. What do we have to use? Say I want to do 64 bits. 
Yeah, there is one. It's called unsigned long int. I'll just check it. So it's in bytes, right? So if it's 64 bits, how many bytes should I get? Eight. Let's try. No. So that is also still four. Very interesting, right? Just depends on uh, how, well, okay. On this platform, uh, it's uh, unsigned long is still 32 bits, right? I don't know what it is for the NIOS. What do we need to define this? I mean, as of now, you can't get 60. It seems like there is no, for this C compiler, it doesn't recognize 64 bits. And kind of makes sense because it depends on the processor as well. But I'm just doing some tests, right? That's all I'm doing. So for us, 32 bits is fine. Yeah. The bottom line is you have to make sure because, again, primarily because it's embedded code that you really have every part of your program nailed down, right? Or you will get errors which you cannot debug. Because this is running along with hardware, right? In this case, I mean, there's, there's no hardware except wires. But let's say you were interfacing to this to a VGA core. All right, this is all good. So code for displaying zero looks good. All right, let's just do an example. Integer uh, number, ah, unsigned int. Because by default, if you type int, it's signed. All right, that's the ANSI C standard. Unsigned int uh, number is what, 23? Yes. Unsigned int um, units digit is 23% 10. Uh, unsigned int tens digit is 23 divided by 10. Yes? So, let's say code for displaying units digit. Okay? Forty-eight. Well, it's seventy-nine hex. I guess it's forty-eight. Hmm. Interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Oh no, no, that's right. So thirty hex. No, that's right. It's right. Never mind. I was looking at one. I want to look at three. And yes, forty-eight decimal is thirty hex. All right, so good. It's working. But that's not what we want, right? We want our thirty-two bit line to contain data both for hex zero, hex one, right? And zero, zero, or you can turn it off, right? It's the hex two and hex three. I'm gonna assume it's zero, zero. So it's, what you will see is zero, zero, two, three. So we're running out of time. I want you to think about this. So in other words, I basically want unsigned int hex out, initially it's zero. So somehow, I need to get my appropriate bits into hex out using this data directed programming, right? I claim you can do that in one line. Again, remember this is C code. I mean, sorry, this is embedded code. You gotta be very efficient, right? You can use if then else, but it's not necessary, right? So think about, uh, so hex out equals what? So you can do this in one line. Yeah, with bit shifting. Uh, there are no nested comments in C, but use bit shifting. Okay. So that's what use bit shifting to obtain correct hex out. Okay. So think about this, and we'll continue this next time. Right. So next we'll. Uh, finish this up. I think next lecture we might actually finish this simple um, counter. So we'll also look at interrupts. And then on Friday, what we might do is I might just do VGA. Right. Next week we're going to do SD card. So 
Cool. Yeah. All right. See you next lecture.